Hi! Well, yesterday morning, while I was getting ready for school, I had to deal with the most struggling task of the morning. Do you know what it is? Yes, it's <laughs> deciding what to wear. Looking through my wardrobe, which is honestly pretty low on actually good clothes, I stumbled on a shirt that managed to catch my attention. Yeah, finally a nice shirt. There was just one little insignificant, well, not that insignificant, problem. It was a Pokemon shirt. The fact that it was objectively beautiful and that it even matched my eye color didn't matter at all. It could have been the best shirt ever, but it would still have had those Japanese catching creatures printed on. And although I have been in love with the Pokemon brand since I was just eight years old, I was this tall, and I had never hesitated to buy new Pokemon games, when I seriously considered the idea of wearing that very shirt, my mind got possessed by external thoughts, such as, such as this, that would come. Hey, that guy really is a nerd, huh? Or even, still playing stupid, childish video games. What a loser. Or even, why can't you be a more serious person? These are all judgments, bad judgments, I could have been labeled with by people I don't even know, because I would have been a not intellectual enough 17-year-old boy who had the same shirt your 10-year-old brother has, because in fact, I, would ha I wouldn't have been how others wanted me to be. So, what did I do that morning? You want to know it. <laughs> As I, did I decide not to care and probably wear what I wanted to? Well, as simple and as predictable as it can be, I put the Pokemon shirt back where I had found it, and I wore another shirt, a completely black one. <laughs> and let me say that this is pretty sad. Now, let's get deeper into this episode of mine. Wearing the sad black shirt wasn't an action dictated by my own free will, but by something else, something that, unlike my will, I just couldn't shut down. And that thing is fear. The fear of being judged by other people overcame my desires and made me do something I wouldn't normally do. Because of fear, I shut down something that was part of me I shut down one of my cells, the Pokemon fan self. I didn't want to be judged by that single harmless piece of clothing. Because here I am, I talked, I am a unique individual. I am more than just an nerd. I don't want to be reduced to just one thing. Talking with some friends and acquaintances of mine, I found something similar happened to other people as well. I found out about a professor who was afraid that someone could catch him in the act of reading Game of Thrones, because, well, you know, that isn't a book a professor should read. It's too shallow, and let's not even talk about fantasy books. He should instead read an evergreen 18th century Russian poem, like Dostoevsky's ones. Then there's my billiard friend who has been in love with ballet since childhood, but he never got himself to practice it. You know, it would have made him look like an effeminate guy, a gay guy, and this was far too big a risk for him. He just couldn't compromise the masculinity he was supposed to embody, just like other teenage guys, and in order to do so, he sacrificed his greatest passion. If you think about it, there are millions of examples like the one I reported to you. And I even presume the same might have happened to you too. Now, you may be asking yourself, what should we do? Despite everything we would instinctively do, hiding ourselves won't be of help at all. By not expressing 
who we are, who we really are, we are just creating a society around us that doesn't accept us while we reserve our inner selves to our little comfort zones in which we can act freely. Why does this happen? When we prevent ourselves from expressing all those things that may seem embarrassing and shameful to others' eyes, we are just defending ourselves from criticism. And this criticism is regulated by common beliefs and prejudices, which basically means by society. Long story short, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. No Pokemon, no Game of Thrones, and please no ballet, you're not gay. Those things can wait until you get back from the Colosseum. Now, we are, forgetting some, we are forgetting something fundamental by pinning the whole thought on society. Society isn't an external force whose, who, that controls us and whose main objective is to make us unhappy. It is not a mythological monster, nor an abstract concept, but it is something very, very concrete. We, as a society, the same people who have passions and we would like not to be afraid of expressing them. If we look closer at the logic behind this reasoning, something interesting pops up. If we are part of society, and if we are afraid of society's judgment, then that basically means that we are afraid of our own judgment. To put it in other words, while we judge people, we don't want to be judged by other people. But we make people feel the same way we don't want to feel. Our imaginary friend Bobby here, here is Bobby, if you can see him, then you have no imagination because he is an imaginary friend, <laughs> is going to serve as an example of this process. Bobby is an average 13 year old boy who really loves harmony books. Yeah, those books with silly love stories full of cliches. Of course, almost no one knows about this guilty pleasure of his, because if this were to be known, his social life would tragically end, don't you think so? This though doesn't stop Bobby from making jokes about a classmate that is obsessed with documentary about insects. And this classmate feels the same way Bobby feels when uh, someone makes jokes about him loving how many books, and thus the cycle of uh, criticism and discomfort keeps going round. Now, I will ask you two little questions. First, would you like to be able to express what you love, to do what you love, without always being alert? And then, do you ever find yourself judging other people for something they like that doesn't correspond with what you think they should like. It is likely that your answers to both of these questions are yes, at least even to the second answer. I have found myself judging other people, I admit that, but now when I think about it, I feel ashamed. And so I, I talked, what if we work so that the answer to the second question becomes a nice no. Of course, we would have to stop labeling people with aesthetic prejudices at first sight. But then we could freely express whatever we love, even if we love uh, dead birds, even if we love everything that the most embarrassing thing in the world, we could be able to express them. I'm not saying that this is an easy objective to achieve. I would like to say that it is. I would like to say that it's simple. But in reality, it is not. But, and here comes the nice part of the story, we don't have to immediately get to the final objective. We can start from daily and little actions. So now, before I leave this beautiful stage, and this beautiful audience, which is you because you are beautiful, <laughs> I would like you to invite you to do something. For once, go out and express 
yourself. For once, go out, and when you see someone, don't immediately judge them from what they appear like. For, for once, uh, just go out and what yourself. Thank you very much.